Even amidst the beauty of the Greek islands, this one stands apart. If there was a single image of a Mediterranean paradise, it would look pretty much like Santorini. Villages built into the sides of cliffs, whitewashed churches with their distinctive blue domes, black, red and pink sand beaches formed by a cataclysmic volcanic eruption 4,000 years ago. But Santorini's natural blessings may also have become a curse in an Instagram age when seemingly every holidaymaker is in search of the perfect picture. This island may just be too beautiful. Overrun, at times overwhelmed with tourists for much of the summer. It really may be possible to have too much of a good thing. This is arguably the most famous selfie spot in Europe. Certainly it's most famous sunset. But if you come here looking for the perfect shot, don't expect to be alone. The crowds, the queues, the jostling for position, you won't see that on anyone's Instagram feed. In the classic sunset beauty spot of Ia, Vangelis Makoris guides me through the highlights of his Instagram tours. Next one's even better, the is it? Next one is even better. OK, bad. OK. For his clients, getting a holiday snap isn't just something you do when abroad. The photo is the thing, the whole reason for making the trip. This is the classic Santorini picture. And sometimes your clients will be here in Santorini just for the day, just to come and get this picture and you, a few others. You, you wouldn't believe. I have guests that they come here with uh, different sets of clothing. And every time we change the spot, they change. They take different pictures, like they spent here many, many days. It's, it's how they like it. It's Instagram era. So when they talk about over-tourism, hyper-tourism, so what do you say when you're making a good living from it? Well, uh, I can see how it complicates the experience of a lot of people. I strongly believe that there must be a type of uh, control. I understand there's like other places like Venice that they pay a fee so they can enter. Should they do that here? Sooner or later, it seems that it's going to be the only way. But despite numbers heading ever higher, the local government here complain of how little power Athens gives them to levy new charges, to restrict the numbers of hotel beds, most of all, to turn back the tide of Airbnb rentals. We need to, to put a stop into building new hotels and new hotel beds and new Airbnbs because we already have enough. Unfortunately, um, we are not given the power, for example, like um, Venice or like Florence or like other European destinations. Uh, we only have to deal and manage everyday things, but we don't have the power to say we don't need any more hotel beds. So there's a danger here of killing the goose that lays the golden egg. Exactly, and I think that um, the governments all the governments, they have to understand this. This is not just Santorini. There is, there is a public debate also for Paros, also for Naxos, for all the Cycladic islands. And across these islands, Santorini more than anywhere, the easy money of the tourist economy is driving out real life. Doctors, nurses, school teachers like Anthe Patramani, trying to live and work while avaricious landlords switch to Airbnb rentals. A teacher that uh, just started working, uh, his first salary is around uh, 740 euros. And the most economical house, actually not house, room or small studio, uh, costs more than 350 euros. Most of uh, my colleagues are forced to leave their houses during summer period or Easter vacations and return again uh, on September 1st when the, the, the schools are starting because they use these houses uh, to, for, for the tourists. So landlords tell your colleagues, yes, you can have this house, you can rent this house, but Easter holidays, summer holidays, you leave and I put tourists in. Yes. It's easy to see how important tourism is to Santorini. Basically, it is the economy of the island. But at what price? In just five years, electricity demand here has doubled. Water demand has doubled in the last 10 years. They built a new desalination plant that was meant to last 15 years. In five years' time now, they must build another. Now, however rich all this may be making people, it is clearly unsustainable.
There are brave attempts to rebalance the tourist economy, to slow things down. As you could see from the colour, it's dark and caramelised. Llamas. Llamas. Maria Matsantu makes wine from the mineral-rich volcanic slopes of Santorini using traditional methods, offering holiday experiences a long way from the Instagram sunset crowds. The sort of tourism that would have people tasting these delicious wines that are produced on this island and eating the gastronomy and the local foods, that is sustainable, isn't it? True, and uh, they really appreciate more and more uh, the time and the money they have spent to come in our island. But you've seen how tourism has developed in the last 10 years, 15 years. Are things moving in the right direction or the wrong direction? I think uh, we are uh, at the point that we should be more careful, let's say, because you can't stop the development and the development is not always a bad thing. But can you have too much of a good thing? Uh, no, I think too much, like I already said, it's, uh, it's not a good thing. We should find uh, the balance. But those hoping for balance look with dread at the massive cruise ships lining up in Santorini's horseshoe-shaped lagoon. Tourists are disgorged in unthinkable numbers, 13,000 on the day we were filming, onto an island whose population is just 15,000. And the shopkeepers, who you might think would welcome them with open arms, well, they're saying too much. Quality is better, you know? That's what they say, quality over quantity. Because everybody's complaining. Like, I have a lot of clients here be like, oh my God, it's cruise ships, a lot of people. And we went to Ia to see the sunset, but we couldn't do that. So yeah, it's gonna be better for everybody, I think. I will show you my books. Reina Madrinos remembers the days when her island was all about quality rather than quantity. When Jackie Onassis came to her jewellery store, and a few years later when former President George Bush Sr. chose to holiday here. They have everything on the ship. You don't need to buy anything. They have in a very good price whatever you want, clothes, jewellery, accessory, everything. So the only people making money from these cruise the ships owner, the are the owner, owners of the, the cruise lines. Who selling the, the, the <coughs> from the ship they're selling to go to the excavation, to Ia, to the beach, whatever. They will be cutting cruise ship arrivals from next summer to no more than 8,000 a day. But the hotel building, the Airbnbs, the arrivals by air, demand is still going up and so will the numbers. Santorini is far from alone. More and more travelers all wanting to go to the same few places. And as yet, no coherent response or coordinated action from global policymakers as to how to save some of Europe's most beautiful, most precious treasures.